hello everyone um, welcome to this new video so um, earlier I showed how to do electromagnetic modeling of uh, infinite arrays of nanoparticles uh, or nanostructures so in this video I'm going to show you how to do photothermal modeling of single nanoparticles or nanoparticle clusters uh, or also different uh, um, anisotropic uh, nanostructures so the condition here is that the nanoparticle or the cluster of nanoparticles or assemblies they have to be overall the size of the entity should be smaller than the wavelength of incidence then we can do the scattered field uh, electromagnetic simulations <clears throat> and then we can find the absorption cross-section the amount of energy the nanoparticle cluster or the nanoparticle is absorbing and then we can uh, find what will be the final temperature so for reference um, here is one of the works uh, of mine uh, from recent years and here basically uh, a, a cluster of nanoparticles is investigated as you can see that the temperature of the nanoparticles they vary very strongly within the cluster depending on the position of the nanoparticle in the cluster um, also interestingly the interparticle distance of the clusters it is very important because when the nanoparticles are really closely packed uh, close to each other in that case we have higher absorption and then we also have a higher phototermal temperature but when the nanoparticles are a bit far apart sometimes just eight nanometers <clears throat> and then we see that the temperature is much lower and such a variation can be within a window of I don't know 30 to 100 uh, at least in this case so it's a quite large window of temperature variation that can be just achieved by <coughs> modulation of the interparticle distance so this kind of photothermal effect is quite interesting in many applications uh, for example in, in uh, photothermal therapy for drug delivery for instance uh, where the cell wall is uh, broken by higher temperatures attained by the nanoparticles that are sitting on the cell walls <coughs> so here is another work that I did uh, it's, a, it's a recent work so here um, also the, the convective effect is studied but in this video we are not getting uh, to the convective effect uh, but what what I want to uh, talk about here is only the conduction and it's important to also mention that uh, the convective effect does not have a big influence on the on the final temperature uh, because uh, the time scale of these convective currents it's is much um, weaker as compared to you know the heat transfer rate so uh, there is no influence <clears throat> however um, such convective currents can still be useful and can be um, quite significant uh, in many applications in, in optical tweezer applications for instance is important in photoporation in drug delivery also such kind of convective effect can either hinder the drug uh, transfer process or can also assist depending on uh, the position of the nanoparticles in the microenvironment. Um, that is just one application I think nowadays there is a lot of interest in, in uh, photothermal uh, catalysis uh, where such nanoparticle clusters individual nanoparticles or even nanoparticle films um, are used as catalyst films which are um, illuminated by light and the photothermal effect also assist in the catalytic process so overall it's a quite growing field uh, even there are some uh, startups working on this kind of um, a new catalytic um, uh, methods so 
Uh, before we start, just want to give an overview. Um, so this is the problem statement kind of. Uh, we have a nanoparticle illuminated by a beam of light in infinite environment. And so this light is uh, interacting with the nanoparticle. The nanoparticle uh, will absorb some amount of light and with it will also scatter away some amount of light. The scattered light is lost to the surrounding, but the absorbed light thermalizes, so uh, it dissipates as heat and heat up the nanoparticle. Now, this is an isolated nanoparticle case. Now, you might want to compare it to a solution of nanoparticle, for instance, where we have a gold nanoparticle colloid, or it may be also other materials, where we have a darkish or yeah, maybe a darkish solution and intuitively we know that if we illuminate this solution with light the solution will heat up uh, but in this case what is happening is that there are billions of nanoparticles in that solution and then when you heat it up uh, all these nanoparticles heat up together and uh, the heat transfer to the surrounding is only possible at the boundaries but within the system in the colloid the heat is uh, retained and uh, such a thing will can be modeled by taking an effective medium approach like uh, we take we can calculate some effective heat capacity and, and and conductivity of the of the nanoparticle colloid and then we can also determine what is the temperature attained by laser or light illumination. But in this case, we are more interested uh, in the local temperature changes because that's where uh, the, uh, the, the, let's say, catalysis or, or photoporation or this kind of a really micro scale uh, phenomena are going to uh, take place so so um, before we go ahead <clears throat> there are also some points to note for instance um, isolated nanoparticles and nanoparticle particle clusters are only considered here so that point I have already talked about uh, the medium is water here because most of these applications are in water but it could also be air or silica matrix depending on of course the application then I already talked about it, convection does not influence the heat transfer. Uh, and uh, it is important to mention here that the intensity of laser has to be quite high if we want to attain even a temperature rise of 50 degrees Celsius. I'm saying it because sometimes we might also compare it to, let's say, heating of uh, heating of um, in heating inside a solar cooker for instance just by light or, or heating up of uh, inside of a building just by you know light coming in uh, but there is a difference so if we have this kind of isolated nanoparticles and if we have a lot of them in closely packed inside a volume and then we can also have this kind of you know absorbing uh, medium effect then of course uh, that will be a, a different altogether but here we are only interested in the single nanoparticles um, and, and its vicinity and and uh, in for instance cellular application we don't really have a uh, lot lot of nanoparticles uh, together we rather have nanoparticles isolated clusters or nanoparticles uh, that are on the cell walls for for drug delivery. Some of the results, what kind of results we can get, for instance, from the paper I have already talked about, the second one. So you can also find this kind of phototermal temperature spectra. So you can um, you can determine for each wavelength what will be the final steady state temperature. Um, given that the laser intensity is fixed uh, across the entire spectrum. Then 
we can also get yeah this kind of temperature profiles yeah i will not repeat it because uh, i already talked about it that the temperature of the nanoparticles in the clusters they very strongly with the position so coming to the main steps of the simulation so first uh, we have to do optical modeling to find the absorption cross-section of the nanoparticles and this absorption cross-section plus also taking into consideration the intensity of light we can find how much energy heat energy will be dissipated by the nanoparticle and based on that we will use this, this information in the conduction modeling of the nanoparticles uh, and we'll find out the temperature so that's the introduction and let's start i'm using comsol multiphysics 6.1 but um, a earlier version will also be sufficient So uh, we first go to model wizard, it's a 3D model, then we go to wave optics and in wave optics we choose uh, electromagnetic waves, frequency domain, we add that, go to study again, select frequency domain and done. So the usual workflow of COMSOL is something like this that you first make the geometry and within the geometry you define the materials which material is what the properties of the materials because the properties are also in the equations that we are going to solve and then we define the physics um, we uh, give the input wave or output and stuff like that uh, related to the the electromagnetic waves then we do the meshing and then we are going to go with the computation so we will take the same strategy uh, we can make a geometry start making the geometry here but to just make it uh, more global um, uh, we will define some parameters here and these parameters we will use in the geometry so radius we will uh, define as 10 so that's the radius of the nanoparticle PML. so this is the radius of the PML means it's the the size of the computational domain but what is PML I will talk about it later for now I'm just uh, defining it so the thickness of the PML is um, is also very important but I will talk about it later radius and and then uh, in uh, the amplitude of the incident wave so the units for for radius and and pml it's i'm not mentioning it here because in the geometry anyway i will set the units to nanometers then the lambda is the wavelength so COMSOL does not know whatever you are providing here COMSOL does not really know what lambda is it's not an internal vari variable in, in COMSOL but then you have to state somewhere okay so where COMSOL asks okay what is the frequency or lambda then you have to give your lambda there so that's how it works the um, Uh, 
the cross section area of the geometry is very important important means it will be used in one of the formulas later um, then also the intensity I already copied these formulas because sometimes this is for instance from console's own uh, terminology so if you're not doing it right then uh, you might have errors but I don't think it's a problem I will just check it once okay so just to give you a, an overview so Sigma geometry there's a cross section area is here and uh, intensity it's a well known formula to find out intensity from the amplitude of the wave so this is intensity so these are the formulas I also open one of my old case files so that I just want to make sure that yeah okay so see it's geom here so I will rather go with geom because because the formulas later I also use the, the terminology geom so I will use geom okay so based on um, these uh, for, let's first make the geometry so the sphere I forgot to make it nanometer so that's important so in the sphere the radius of the nanoparticle then one more sphere I'll just duplicate it and change it here so R PML and so here we have it that's in a nanoparticle and around it it's a computational domain but unlike other physics in, in this uh, kind of uh, scattered field uh, modeling, it's important to also have a thick layer around the, uh, the computational domain, and that's called the PML. So I already defined above the PML, so I will show you. RPML and TPML they are already defined here so you just need to type the, uh, the names so after I um, make this whole thing you can see it's like a shell so the shell this layer is called the PML or perfectly matched layer what it does is so we are solving for the scattered field right so in presence of a incident wave um, the nanoparticle will be interacting with it and then it will be scattering light around it and it will also be absorbing so the scattered light if it is again um, reflected back on the boundary of the um, computational domain then it will again come back interact with a nanoparticle again it will get reflected so it will be like a never-ending process and that's not what happens when uh, you have a nanoparticle um, in reality the scattered light get lost to the surrounding so this PML basically uh, takes care of it then it, it makes the scattered wind disappear so it's perfectly absorbing So that's the geometry, it's uh, quite simple. So again, for convenience, we will again um, define a few more things. For example, um, we will define uh, the physical domain. We'll um, So what we are doing here is basically we are just uh, giving things names 
so that it will be easier later. Okay, so I'm hiding the outer surface. First, I will select the inside. So I'm selecting the space uh, outside the nanoparticle. Now I will also select. So, uh, I have selected the nanoparticle and its surrounding inside now. So, the next is to, uh, to um, state what is PML. So, I will just take a complement and here I will select which is to be excluded so whatever is not physical domain is now PML so I will give it a name PML again this time I will only select the nanoparticle Call it and a particle. Again, um, this time we will select the surface of the nanoparticle. So we have to first select boundary. So we'll call it nanoparticle surface I mean you can do the model also without you know giving names to everything it just makes things simpler just just for convenience these things we're doing here okay um, so we have defined these things um, What we need to define now is some integration. So why it is integrations? I will talk about it later. Um, so First, we will define an, an integration of our, the nanoparticle volume. And then we will define uh, an integration over the surface. So what we are doing here is actually we are um, defining a volume integration and a surface integration um, over I think I made a mistake here so here it should be volt because it's a volume integration let's say into surf okay so this one is a surface integration over the surface it's a volume integration so what we are going to integrate we don't know we are just you know preparing this integration function and then we can use this integration um, 
basically it's it's like a function to integrate something over you know this nano particle volume or surface so um, here we'll define some variables um, so why we are doing this because this is actually something uh, we are doing in advance um, so that later some of the quantities we can calculate directly just giving the name but it can also be done manually so I will also show show later that you can also skip this step altogether into a fault of sort of nothing you have to do you can just go to the global evaluation you just write the formula and you define where you want to do integration or uh, or yeah on the surface or the volume it will just give you the same result um, I'm just doing it because uh, it can be useful in other simulations so and also it's easy for me to um, explain so this is the pointing vector and what is a pointing vector uh, basically you need normal um, um, cross product with the pointing vector so it will basically give the energy flow rate rate um, across the surface so what you do is basically you take a dot product of the unit normal vector and the pointing vector and what is a pointing vector it's basically the cross product of the magnetic and the electric field um, it gives you the energy flow uh, uh, flow rate basically but you can find it easily on the what is pointing vector so so I will go back to an old simulation oh no I actually have the have it here so this is what we have to copy and paste I will show you everything um, so this is what we are doing so NX and Y and Z they're the three components of the unit normal vector and this is the X component of the um, pointing vector so Sigma scattering is the term that we use for uh, finding scattering cross-section so um, uh, how to do it actually when you integrate the pointing vector which is basically energy flow that is going out uh, if we integrate this pointing vector dot product with the unit normal vector over the nanoparticle surface that will basically give you the um, energy going out or the scattered energy that is going out which is basically the scattered light and when we want to express it in terms of a cross-section we just have to divide it by the intensity of light so we will use the integration that we have already defined in top serve and enrobe UAV from above absorption interval so I'm taking 
the interval from here. Then there is resistive heating QH, so that is already something console has built in. I just don't want to make a mistake with the with brackets and stuff or the terminology, so to be careful here. Okay, so it's yellow because I think there has to be some specification of but I think normally yellow means we can go ahead with it uh, I will check it later maybe the units or something uh, that might be missing okay I think that's enough uh, this is all that we need for for our uh, purpose here okay so the next is um, to define a perfectly matched layer. So perfectly matched layer. So we have already specified it in the selections above, right? So we can directly choose that. Just that was the purpose. So the geometry is spherical uh, coordinate we are solving it in and PML scaling factor is 0 0.5 um, Okay here I think it's done so in the materials we can now define um, what is gold and what is water so first let's take out a blank material and everything we just define as water why because now even the nanoparticle is water inside but then we can override it with, with the properties of gold another blank material and this time we will select manual nanoparticle because it is already defined here but you could also manually select it so that's what I was talking about you can also do everything manually it's not going to make any difference now uh, here we have to define where here we have to give the complex refractive index of gold now the problem here is that the refractive index of gold changes with the wavelength of light so if we are solving for 300 now we have to give it here one real part an imaginary part but we want to do this entire simulation from 300 to 900 for many different wavelengths so we have to give it kind of a list right and within that list if the wavelength that we want to solve for is falling in between you know the the table then we also want console to interpolate and and find the value of the refractive index for that intermediate wavelength so something like that can be done very easily what we need to do is we have to um, take out an interpolation and in the interpolation table that basically has a wavelength on the x-axis and the refractive index in the y-axis so this kind of data you can easily find um, in some literature so, so this is NA which is a real part of gold's refractive index at it this is wavelength and this is the real part of uh, refractive index that is n a u one more it's now for the imaginary part k a u
All right. So we have defined in a u and k u these tables, and we define a linear interpolation. So for wavelengths in between these values, it will just find from linear interpolation. So here now we can just define n a u and lambda is the wavelength because uh, for different lambda you need to find right so okay and a u and k u lambda so we have defined the material now in the electromagnetic wave um, specify the background electric field so first of all we have to select scattered field so you have two options here full field and scattered field um, <coughs> I'm sorry so what is the difference so in, in full field basically you have this computational domain um, then you have a wave coming in the boundary you define the wave coming in and also wave going out from another boundary and you just solve the electric field inside um, that is the full field so the solution will be full field total field which will be um, sum of the scattered field plus the incident field now what is scattered field solution it's here in this case you already know what is the background electric field. Why? Because um, you know when the nanoparticle will not be there. It will only be just plain light, which is just the sine wave. And so that is the electric field incidence, the E, I, and C, uh, how they um, put it in, in proper terminology. So there's the incident wave and then because of the presence of the nanoparticle uh, there will be a scattering of the of some of the wave and also there will be absorption so that will be the scattered field and the total field will be the incident field plus the scattered field so we are here already solving for the scattered field now so the incidence field field in absence of the nanoparticle will define here let's assume that the field is going like this upwards like that so it will modulate in the x direction and it will propagate in the z direction so we can define e naught is basically the amplitude and uh, Exponential minus J, um, basically the Euler's formula. So whatever refractive index uh, uh, you have for the medium, you have to also add it here because it also changes the wave, right? So it slows down the or, or fastens the dielectric medium. Yeah, I mean the dielectric medium slows down. 
fast uh, light wave. I still have problem here. So here, I think the unit. Uh, so I think now it is looking quite all right. Okay, so that is the incident or the background wave. We have defined the materials. Initial values don't matter here. It's a, it's not like a, a, a time domain solution uh, model. Um, so actually, we're we're done here. As you can see, all the boundaries are already defined. Now let's go to meshing. The meshing is a bit. Um, it is. It is. It has a specific way. It's always better this way. Um, but in general, the meshes in computational electromagnetics. Uh, they are not that difficult. I mean, they don't create problems like they do in with dynamics. We don't have the nonlinear terms here, so it's quite simple. Um, so how we do it? First, we mesh outside boundaries of the computational domain. So sweeping means the, the outer mesh is swept across uh, through, the, through the, sh uh, the shell and then we have like two levels here, right? So it's better to have more. So you we go to distribution and by default it's five. So we select and then we have got five layers. Uh, it's better. It's more uh, to absorb it. And the rest, we can just mesh tetrahedral. Um, let's have a look how it looks like inside. So the mesh is a bit coarse, but in electromagnetics, it's not a big issue in general. But just to be safe, uh, let's make it a bit finer. I think this is good enough. Now we are actually almost uh, ready to go ahead. So, as you can see, uh, console only knows frequencies, so we will define. the relationship between our lambda in the parameters and frequencies so um, I'll just take it from the old simulation because I don't want to uh, make any mistake with the 
ഒരു സിൻറ്റക്സ് so speed of light divided by the wavelength it's a well known uh, relationship so frequency unit i think it's uh, better to keep it hard um i think we are almost done so because now if we solve the model then it will only solve for 300 nanometer but we want to solve it for uh, we want to solve it for the entire spectrum so we will use parametric sweep and in parametric sweep we will choose lambda and then we will define a range let's say from uh, 300 with a gap of 5 nanometer to 900 so it will give an entire spectrum but i think for the purpose of this video it's better to make it smaller so that um, we can get uh, spectra quickly and then move on to the uh thermal for the thermal simulation for temperature evaluation so let's look at cold nanoparticle uv spectra so as you can see the cold nanoparticle particle uh, uv spectra it looks somewhat like this so normally the intensity is really high here so here the nanoparticles are absorbing and scattering the highest so if you shine a laser of 700 nanometer then these cold nanoparticles will not heat up that much because the energy is really less here and the uh, absorbance but if you shine let's say 530 then it will be quite high so we will go for a very small window in this entire spectrum just to find the absorbance at those wavelengths now if you are illuminating with solar light then it will be a complete spectrum and in that in that case if you want to find out then you might have to take an integration of the total energy absorbed by the nanoparticle but that's something uh, i cannot show in this video now but that is also doable just two wavelengths three i hope uh, everything is in order so that it solves already seems like everything went fine So this convergence plots they basically mean that um, the convergence was quite smooth. Now um, the solution for these two wave three wavelengths we already have them here. As you can see, three wavelengths. Now. Um, Now you will see just going to global evaluation we can just type in the formulas that we provided here uh, then it will directly give us the values absorption and scattering cross-section so it is sigma apps it gives 
says in nanometer, but we can change it. Uh, sorry, meter square, but we can change it to nanometer square. And we have the results. So we have to choose all. Um, you can delete frequency. Sorry, we have to choose the parametric solution and then we can select all the lambda. Then it will give us the values for all the lambda. So um, we'll calculate it again, override. So here we have it. Um, this is the absorption cross section. light that terminates. Um, and secondly, such small nanoparticles, uh, they scatter so less it's almost negligible. Here you can see it's just 4.2 nanometer square. Here it's 554 um, around. So what is this nanometer square cross section? So basically this is the energy, oh sorry, is the area equivalent of the energy absorbed by these nanoparticles in terms of the intensity of the incident light. So that means if we uh, multiply the absorption cross section with the intensity of light then we get the absolute value of Okay, so we actually have what we needed from the optical modeling or the electromagnetic modeling. We have the different cross section. Now let's assume that we are eliminating the particle with a 530 nanometer laser. In that case, the absorption cross section is 519. Let's call it 519. So this is the number. That's a different problem altogether, which we'll look at, uh, which we will do in another video. But uh, here, just uh, heat transfer in solids is what we need to select. Then we go to study. We find a stationary problem. Now you can also choose time dependent. Because in that case, what you can do is you can uh, choose like a uh, give like a pulsed laser. Uh, 
like here so you define like a pulse laser so you define a function of the laser uh, uh, then you can also get this kind of uh, pulse temperature profile Here again, we make our first, maybe it's good to already define the radius of the nanoparticle, which is 10 nanometer here. Then radius domain. It should be at least more than 20 times of the nanoparticle. We'll make it 40 times. because we are simulating an infinite uh, medium and um, we also have to define the intensity we have to define so depending on the uh, laser of course so here we will define like a it's like a standard um, uh, intensity used in many of the studies because uh, it will give you some uh, temperature rise that is at least uh, significant enough. If the laser is too small or uh, too weak, then you will not get any temperature rise uh, for this kind of single nanoparticle. Um, so again, we will make the first sphere. Then we go to heat transfer and solids. So normally, yeah, we define the materials here. But just to show you in a different way, we can also define the materials here. Because here you have to define the materials. What is the thermal conductivity of the of the medium or the nanoparticle? When you choose from materials, it's already taking it from this tab. But um, we can give it ourselves the all the values. So first, let's let's give it the properties of water, everything, including the nanoparticle. Then we'll override the properties of the nanoparticle later. So that is 1,000 density. Then now you, we again open one more solid and there we will select the nanoparticle of here we have defined. So we will 
select a nanoparticle then we provide the properties of gold so that's gold Okay, put the domains are selected so meshing all over the surface. Here I can choose the size. So these two they're not useful. I, directly you can take the three tetrahedral you can select and then you can specify the size. with different meshes the refiner is taking quite long but in this kind of conduction problems mesh is not going to create any problem in general there so it's a quite large mesh but not a problem so we have to define sorry uh, the mesh is done I got distracted actually yeah, here we define the properties but we also define have to define the physics right so we also have to define the what is the um, heat source because the nanoparticle is a heat source so two things we have to define so here we will define particles a heat source and we will just give it a heat rate so the amount of heat that is coming in so I already told that if we just um, take the intensity into the cross section so the cross section is um, Five hundred eighteen. Let's say, for f let's say we are illuminating with five hundred thirty, so five hundred eighteen nanometer square. So five hundred eighteen. So that is five hundred eighteen. And I is the intensity that is also watt per nanometer square, and the unit here. So that's very important because then nanometer square and meter square cancel out, and we have watt. So, because it has the unit here, so I did not put any unit, I'm just giving the value directly. But those things, I think, uh, they're not very difficult to figure out. Finally, the outside wall temperatures we have to define, that will also be the temperature of your surrounding medium. So, far away from the nanoparticles, it will be the temperature of the water normally right or let's say your any medium that you work with 
so that I define to be 298 Kelvin so that actually kind of uh, completes the problem so you will see actually for this uh, a small um, absorption cross section the temperature rise will be very small so we go for the study compute let's so it's doing it quite fast because then we can show it within uh, video define a cut plane this cut plane and then we will go to a 2d plot group and there we will select a surface and then we'll look at the temperature so you see is the temperature um, how it is varying so the highest is of course inside so the temperature rise is quite small only up to around 305 ish yeah it's 305.415 let's say so around six degrees celsius increase why it's because there are really small nanoparticles their absorption cross section is not uh not that high but we have the temperature profile now um things get start uh, getting interesting when we have a high uh, absorption cross section we have an entire uh, you know in thousands then it will also heat up more that's one thing then another thing is when nanoparticles are together uh, it's a cluster then also there can be a thermal accumulation effect and it will also heat up a bit higher like like this case um, and um, this temperature is dependent as you can look at the you can look at the physics here right so um, if we have an insulating wall around it then this temperature will just keep on rising because when the heat is not going away it will raise the temperature so now we have an infinite boundary so that's why heat is being lost to the surrounding now if we put some walls here that is quite insulating the temperature will increase now water uh, instead of water if there was air the temperature will also be higher why because um, air is more insulating uh, that's why uh, so that is one thing and here we also did not take into account radiation um, because at least in the case of water the radiation effect will be not that high uh, it's mostly um, the, the conduction that will dominate here but yes if you are doing it in a vacuum or or in in, in air I think the radiation also has to be taken into account that's uh, one way to do it um, so I think we are at the end of this video I hope you uh, could follow it and could be useful in your research um, this way we can find the photothermal temperature of clusters of nanoparticles or isolated nanoparticles um, the local thermal temperature um, we can also directly use uh, 
the the analytical solution for spherical nanoparticles uh, because for spherical nanoparticles there is already an analytical solution we can use the lump capacitance uh, approximation uh, assuming that the nanoparticle is just um, uniformly heated and then we can find a temperature profile starting from the surface of the nanoparticle which will be quite a good approximation uh, I think that will not be difficult to do at all you can just go chat GPT and find out to do it and uh, get the analytical solution but whenever we have this kind of complex structures or anisotropic nanostructures then this kind of modeling will be more appropriate uh, for watching this video. Uh, see you next time.